I'm so excited to share Texture Looper with you. It's my first tool for After Effects, and I'm gonna show you how to use it right now. So this is the panel, it's dockable, so you can put it anywhere you want in the interface, and it's just a single button, really easy to use. So let's go ahead and navigate to some textures. All of these textures come with Texture Looper, and I've prepared them so that they're seamless and all leveled out so they're easy to use, ready to go, and applied to any project you're working on. So I'm just gonna grab this folder of cement textures, and put it in my comp. With all of them selected, I'm just gonna click on the Loop Selected Textures button. It's automatically gonna pre-compose that and set up the rig to instantly start randomly offsetting all of those textures. So Texture Looper is choosing a random frame from that pre-comp to display, and it's also randomly rotating it and offsetting its position based on the frames per second that we have set here. So if I wanted this to go at a different frame rate, say the frame rate of my comp, 24 frames per second, I could increase that with the FPS control right there. There, and now we're gonna get a new frame for every frame of my comp. If I don't want it randomly rotating or offsetting the position, I could change this random rotation down to zero and the random offset down to zero. And now it's simply going to choose a random frame in that pre-comp and display it. No random rotation or position. And maybe that's a little bit too fast, so you could drop the FPS maybe down to six frames per second and then it will update less frequently. And we also have a random seed value, so if you need a unique starting point for your random selection, of frames, you can just change this value to any other number and it will randomize everything. Finally, we have this mirror edges checkbox. And to show you how that works, I'm actually gonna delete this comp, go into the project and first point out that Texture Looper made a folder called Texture Looper and a comp called Textures. That first set of textures that we added is in that pre-comp. So I could rename this Cement Textures and that way I know what's inside of it. Now, if I close up these folders, I have this image that I just pulled off of Google Images. It is not seamless, it's a watercolor texture, and I just wanna point out that I haven't done anything to this image. But even with a single texture selected, I can click on the Loop Selected Textures button, and it's going to immediately animate that texture, just like before. The problem is we have that seam. Since this isn't a seamless texture, you can see it very clearly. But there's a solution to that. Just click the Mirror Edges checkbox, and that seam will virtually disappear here. So even if you don't have seamless textures, you can really get away with a lot here, especially if you start to use things like blending modes. I'll change this to multiply and then go to this levels effect that's also added by default and maybe just increase the contrast a little bit so we can see it a little more clearly. And now I have an animated watercolor texture over top of my entire comp, giving it just a little bit more energy than it had before. All right, let's get rid of that textures comp and maybe bring out some paper images. I also wanna point out that you need to make sure these textures are aligned to the front of your comp before you hit the button. So don't have them all the way over here or anywhere else in the comp. Make sure they're aligned to the start of your comp. Click the button. We've got our animated sequence and now I can change the blend mode to say multiply again. This one I'm gonna use as a background texture. So I'll drag that just above the background layer and then use the levels effect to crush that contrast and maybe lift those darks so it's not quite so intense. Now I have this paper texture in the background. And I also wanna make another one to use as an overlay just for the button inside this window. So I'm gonna grab my wood textures here, drag them out, again, click the button. I'll drag that layer just above the button and then set the button's luma mat to be that texture source. Again, I'll use the levels effect to crush the contrast and make less of it disappear. But now I've got an animated wood texture driving the alpha mat for that actual button. And I can change the scale of this to fit it a little bit more tightly if I want more of that detail from my texture looper comp. But there we go, we've got an animated texture background as well as a texture overlay shaping the alpha channel of that button in just a few clicks. Now really quickly, I'm gonna bring out one more set of textures, this fabric textures. Click Loop Selected Textures and point out that if your textures are ever too small or you're seeing corners getting cut off here, the tiling is being driven by the motion tile effect. So if I collapse some of these, you'll see random position. This is just a motion tile effect and you can always change the output width and output height if those corners are showing through. So just be aware of that, it's a simple fix. Just go down there and modify these to fill the entire comp. And if you ever wanna add more textures to a comp, you could always go into that pre-comp and you'll notice that everything is just one frame long and it's staggered in a sequence. So if I wanted to bring some of my paper textures into this fabric comp, I could do that. Again, I'll just stick them at the front of the comp Make sure my playhead's at the beginning and press Alt or Option plus the right square bracket to trim the out point so they're all one frame long. And then sequence them by right clicking, go to Keyframe Assistant and say Sequence Layers, click OK, 
and then just make sure that none of them overlap with the existing frames that are already in this comp. And now this Textures 5 comp is actually gonna have two different texture sources within it. If I play it back, you'll see that sometimes we get a paper texture, sometimes we get a fabric texture. Now, last but not least, Texture Looper is also set up to work with K-Bar. If you have this third-party extension, you can create a Texture Looper button. I've included K-Bar icon with a download of Texture Looper. Just set that button to run the script and it's going to automatically do the same thing. So one more time, let's grab say the cement textures, drag them out, and in K-Bar, I'll click the Texture Looper button, and just like that, it does exactly the same thing as the panel. So if you'd rather have a cleaner interface and take advantage of K-Bar, you can do that. That's really all there is to Texture Looper. I hope that you enjoy it. Please let me know what you think about it down in the comments, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I'm so excited to finally have a tool out there in the wild. And I wanna give a huge shout out to Adam Pluff, my boss, for actually creating this script and allowing me to get it into your hands. Follow the card above if you wanna find out more information, or you can find the link in the description. If you use Texture Looper, be sure to tag me at Jake in Motion on Instagram or Twitter so I can see it and share your artwork. I'd love to see how you use Texture Looper. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.